If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and reread the given information before listening on. We scroll down and take a look at what part A is asking us. It says, in terms of only the forces that are directly exerted on block two, explain why block two initially speeds up and then why eventually it slows down to a momentary stop. Now, in order for us to explain that, we would want to consider the forces that are acting on block two. Now, of course, block two possesses mass, so there's going to be a downward gravitational force acting on block two. We can call that force W because the weight of the block is equivalent to the gravitational force exerted on it. And then if we scroll back up and look at the diagram, we can see that block two is attached to that string right there. So there's going to be a tension force exerted by the string on block two, and that tension force would be directed upward. Now, these two forces are going to vary in magnitude during the motion of this block. So for instance, when the block speeds up, that means it's accelerating because the gravitational force is going to have a larger magnitude than the tension force. But eventually, the tension force develops a larger magnitude than the gravitational force. So later on, the free body diagram would switch to showing that the tension force is larger in magnitude than the gravitational force. So these are the concepts that we want to use in order to answer this question. So again, to summarize, at first, the weight or the gravitational force is greater in magnitude, causing the block to speed up. But then later on, the tension becomes larger in magnitude, causing it to slow down. So let's write those thoughts down just to summarize them. So we summarize those thoughts there. If you'd like, you can pause the video and reread that statement one more time. But now we move on to part two of this question, which asks us to derive an expression for the distance delta y that block two travels before momentarily coming to rest. Now, there's no friction in this system. So we're going to be able to use the conservation of energy in which we say that the initial energies present are going to equal the final energies present. Now, it's important to note that the blocks begin in from rest and eventually they also come to rest. So this means that kinetic energy is not going to be a consideration in this problem. If we look at the initial picture, we can see that M2 is located a distance delta y above this reference line right here. So that means that M2 will possess initially some gravitational potential energy. We can represent that initial gravitational potential energy by saying M2 multiplied by G multiplied by that height delta y. Now some of you might notice that gee m1 is also located a certain distance above that re reference line so it too should have gravitational potential energy and indeed it does but notice that as the system begins moving block m1 is going to slide horizontally to the right and when it comes to rest it's going to still be at that same height so that means that its gravitational potential energy doesn't change. So even if we included a term for the initial gravitational potential energy of block one, we would have that same gravitational potential energy on the other side, and they would eventually cancel each other out anyways. So you don't need to include anything related to the gravitational potential energy of block one, because its initial and final values are going to be the same. Now, once the blocks slide along, we can take a look at the picture once they come to rest. So there is a rather crude version of what's going on once they move and then eventually come to rest. We have to ask ourselves, okay, well, what are the final energies present? Well, M2 has now reached that baseline height. Remember, we said that 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 horizontal line, the height is zero. So it no longer has any gravitational potential energy. We've already discounted the gravitational potential energy of M1, but what other energy is present? Well, the spring is now stretched out. So there's definitely going to be some elastic potential energy, sometimes called the spring potential energy. And that is equal to one half multiplied by the spring constant and then multiplied by the distance that the spring has stretched. But if block M2 has fallen a distance of delta Y, then M1 has moved that same distance delta Y. So that means that the spring has stretched itself by a distance of delta Y. So we would have delta Y squared on that side of the equation. Now, our goal is to derive an expression for delta y. So we're going to do that right now. And let's move the equation down so we can tinker with it. There we are. And it's kind of interesting because delta y appears on both sides of the equation. 
If we divide both sides of the equation by delta y, we could cancel out a delta y on the left-hand side, and then we can cancel out one factor of delta y on the right-hand side. Continuing isolating delta y, we can multiply both sides of this equation by 2, because doing so when we multiply 2 by 1 half cancels it out. So now we have 2 m sub 2 g is equal to the k naught times delta y. And then finally, we can divide both sides of the equation by the spring constant k naught in order to cancel it out on the right-hand side. So in fact, there we have it. We've isolated delta y, and we have the correct answer to that part 2 of this question. And finally, there's part B, which asks us to indicate whether the total mechanical energy of the block's spring earth system changes as block two moves downward. Well, the question explicitly stated that there were no friction forces. So therefore, there's no energy dissipated by friction. And there are also no external forces acting on our system. We have the blocks in the spring. There are no external forces coming in. So in that case, since there are no external forces on our system, no energy is being lost by friction. So the mechanical energy is definitely going to remain the same. So it will not change. And if you'd like, you can pause the video and reread the explanation momentarily.